uh, sacred sacred instruments. That's a, that can be a lot of things. It can be something as simple as a protection stone, or it can be something like a protection hood. It can be the musical instruments like the drums and rattles and flutes that pagans use. Um, it's just it's so vast, and there's no way for me relics just just you know, plain relics that haven't been made into anything. I mean, there's so many different things that what I mean by a sacred instrument, but basically it's a tangible thing that you can physically hold. Um, sometimes it's made into something, sometimes it's not. And they all have different meanings and different purposes. Um, and it has to choose you, so you can't just, you can't just, um, you know, say, oh, I would really like one of these, let me go and find one that, that's, that I think suits me. No, it has to be done through sacred permission, which basically means that you have permission and you know how to know the answer without assumption, a, a very hollow, you know, uh, view that you have to look at this through. And by that, by hollow, I mean, you know, take all of your emotion and thoughts and assumptions and everything out of it. And you have to have the magic, you have to have mastered this skill to be able to know the answer correctly and that takes time um, but say you actually pick up a stone or something and it does not want to be used at all it wants to be left alone in nature and it, it's not going to do anything that you want it to do in fact it might even try to go against you um, but again it's just it's a, it's, a, it's a law of paganism that you know you have to respect anything and everything of nature and you can't just take what you want. It, it belongs to itself. If it doesn't want to work with you, then you have to wait until something else. I've waited for cer certain things. I've waited many, many years before, you know, and it, it's worth waiting because you don't have any three foes or something for, for taking something that's not yours. And you also don't have, you know, the, the battle of trying to work with something that is, is going against you. It's a symbionic harmony that happens when they choose you instead of you trying to force something, you know. So that's the first thing that I want to say just in general. Now I'm going to talk about just kind of a few examples to kind of get you to understand exactly what these do. Again, they all have different reasons, different meanings, different things that are used for. I'm going to start out with the protection hood versus a headdress versus a mask. They're all three very different things. A protection hood is actually uh, traditionally the way our ancestors used to do it. You don't have to do this nowadays, it doesn't have to be made out of an, a real animal skin, but it does change the meaning just a little bit and I'll, I'll talk about why. So basically back then it was the spirit of the animal that chose you and whichever animal chose you, if you made a protection hood, it was cut, it was cut a certain way and so that it could be cut and sewn to wrap around the shoulders, not all the way down the back like a headdress. It's not, it's never all the way down. It's only a ra wrapping around the shoulders like a shawl almost, and it's got a hood on it. And it's a very specific way that you have to cut it for the, for the ancient ancestral way that I'm talking about, for it to be correct. But I can't really tell people that because it's kind of a sacred thing, so I can't really explain. But anyway, so basically when that hood was off, it was telling the spirit, okay, I don't need your protection now, I'm good, I'm safe. But when you put the hood on, it was telling the spirit of that animal, I need help, I need protection. Um, back when pagans were still being hunted, uh, back during the witch hunts where they were still being hunted and killed, um, a lot of times they would use this not only to blend in, to act like an animal in the forest. I mean, if they crouched down, you know, they would look, that, that face is in the front. So it would be the face of the animal you know, and you'd see, you know, what looked like just an animal in the forest. But the most important thing they used it for was the actual protection. So it was said that if that hood was up, and it was up, you, you put it on like that, any time it was up, it was said that the spirit was supposed to protect against not only, you know, just any kind of remote or what, what I would call general danger but say somebody had an arrow like poison arrow or something or even a bullet you know aimed at you right at your heart 
then that spirit would divert it. It would divert the path so that the arrow was aimed directly at you, but then it would miss you. Or the bullet would, you know, it would miss you. So it was actually said to have immense magic, but it was something that you didn't have at all unless an animal spirit actually chose you to wear its relic. Relics always belong to the spirits. They never belong to us. They sometimes allow us to use them and it's up to them who they choose, okay? Um, so headdress, you know, for as far as what I understand, it probably did exist somewhere along the line in um, European paganism, but really that's more of a, a United States indigenous people, I think, where that mostly mostly came into play but i won't rule anything out um because nowadays modern paganism uses regular headdresses a lot that just go all the way down the back um it is a usually a very very different meaning usually that either it goes along the lines of some kind of ceremonial dance or something or perhaps actual like shape-shifting stuff uh skinwalker stuff which the skinwalker thin is really a United, it's really primarily a United States belief and the indigenous people there. Um, so masks um, could be used for visionary work, they could be used for rituals, they could be used for a lot of different things. But nothing really, nothing really is the same as the protection hood. It doesn't have the same magic to it. So if you do one of those other two things, you're not, it's not the same, um, it's not the same sacred thing that you're, it's a different magic that you're working with. Similar, perhaps, but different. Now what I was saying was you don't have to actually, nowadays, do a skin if you don't want to. If that bothers you, a lot of people, you know, it's too sad, or a lot of people, even if the animal chooses them, you know, they, they just they just feel bad about it, or some people just can get a little creeped out by it. So just regular satin or something. I am I'm, I'm not joking. You can buy just a regular old satin cloak or shawl. You, you could you could perhaps make it if you wanted it a shawl instead of a full full body cloak. You could do that too. But it has to use I mean don't just wear a jacket with a hood on it because that's that takes away from the magic. It has to be in the shape of a shawl or a cloak or some sort. So it's the act of the actual hood itself, the actual hood that and wrapping around the shoulders and the hood, that's that's what does it. That's that's the magic in it. And so even if you just get a regular old satin, a lot of times I've I've just got on a plain, you know, satin um, cloak and a lot of them don't even have arms they don't even have arms they're just like a cape style you know some of them do have have arms but a lot of them don't I, a lot, I actually prefer the shawl but it's hard to find the the shawl already made um, with the hood on it um, but typically you know it's it's got a certain energy to it alone by itself just because of the the shape and long time ago how that was designed it has magic in it even without you adding your magic to it but then when you add your magic to it it can it, it can be a very powerful item even without any kind of totemic anything um but just you know if you're going for some kind of totemic um thing you can't have the totemic stuff there unless unless perhaps you do what is called a binding, where you're binding totemic energy to said item. And that is very tricky to do um, unless you know how to hear the answer. Like I was saying, whether or not you have sacred permission, you can't just do a binding to just anything for it. No. First, you have to know, okay, what, what you're summoning for sure is what you mean to summon and then you also need to make sure that it's giving you permission to do that um otherwise it'll be a, a, a bloody disaster you'll have a threefold you'll have 
it'll work against you. Anytime you try to do magic, it'll work against you. You know, there's, there's very few circumstances where an actual binding is, is even necessary, much less um, allowed, you know, allowed to happen. People get a little too excited with the bind. And although I, I just want to, it's, it's, uh, it's getting dusk. So although it's getting a little dark, I'm going to try to finish it. If I can't, then I'll turn on a light. If it gets really, really dark. But um, yeah, it's, it's starting to get dusk, so I'm running out of light. So anyway, um, protection stones is something very similar. A lot of people try to do bindings with that when they're not allowed. It's, well, a, a protection stone is simply just something that you wear for protection against evil, against negativity, something like that. But a power stone, that's when people start doing a lot of bad, wrong things, evil things there. Um, a power stone is actually just meant to be a kindred or relatively kindred spirit to your own. So very similar energy to your own. And it's meant to remind you of your own strength and your own abilities. So either when someone has suppressed their abilities too much, um, it'll bring that, it'll force that to the surface. Or when they are a little out of control, or when they can't focus, it'll help them to be more in control and focus. However, you know, even though it's meant to to remind you of the greatest parts of you, that you know, to remind you of, you know, your power and your magic, it's you're never meant to actually take power from it, and that's where a lot of people go wrong. They actually will absorb that. But you, everything has a vibrational type energy. So you can feel that energy and it can remind you of it, your own energy, without actually absorbing the energy. You can just kind of idly sit there and feel it when it's around your neck. And you don't have to actually take that energy. Stones, we pagans believe that stones are actually, um, you know, something that has a soul and then can think and feel. And so if you're taking all the pain away from, or sorry, if you're sorry, if you're taking all the strength away from that and energy away from that, it's paining them. It's weakening them. I actually had a woman tell me, and I, I'm not joking. I had this lady tell me, oh, well, it's all right to do that. It's all right to, to basically suck them dry like an energy vampire. As long as I, you know, uh, recharge it, in the moonlight once a month so basically if you chop off a cat's limbs whenever you feel like it and only sew them back on once a month is that all right because that's basically morally the, the same thing in paganism it's morally the same thing that lady you know she's <laughs> she's a very selfish lady and she doesn't care but you know what like i was saying the binding is a very special thing that only happens in very certain circumstances. And that's not even true binding. What I just said is not really true binding because binding is, you know, they are you and you are them. That, that wasn't, that's just stealing energy. That's not even true binding. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is musical instruments. Um, there's a lot of music that paganism it revolves around. It's such a powerful tool. And really, we can't do without it between the drums and the rattles and the flutes especially, but really anything, anything of music, anything of song, is deeply rooted in paganism. You can't have that, usually, you can't have that without some kind of song, with some kind of music. And the, the instruments are a lot different than, um, than uh, modern day instruments. They're, depending on the instrument, it can be used Anywhere from healing to pre to protection, like shield-like magic, to actual war magic, to influence magic. I mean, there are so many different things it can be used for. It is almost endless, depending on what the instrument is and what the song is. Those are the two, you know, main factors. The instrument itself is half, and then the song that you're actually doing is the other half. As to what determines as you know what is used for then we have things like war horns that don't actually do a full song but they still have a really powerful sound it can be really powerful protection and war magic you know they're not just something you blow when there's danger like like the stupid movies they actually do a lot of powerful war magic and protection magic, and even sometimes cleansing magic so again i can't give you all the examples of everything but there's just a few examples and that's what i mean it can even just be an idol relic that you're using you know some kind of 
totemic energy from, but you always have to have permission. 